my workspace is becoming a disaster field, field of debris, disaster zone. What is it, what is it I'm trying to say? Well, the last couple of days I have been pleasantly, uh, I'm not surprised necessarily, but I'm inheartened. Is that the right word? Not disheartened, but the opposite of that, because I've been connecting with pen users who, um, many of whom have broad tastes in the nibs they use and um, are less concerned about the back of the pen from the nib to the cap than they are about the nib to the other end, which means, by the way, where's a pen, where's a pen in my house here where I can explain it? Where's a pen that's complete? No, God, why can't I find one that's put together? Uh, here, there. They are concerned to a degree with all of these elements, I'm sure, but the importance is not from here this way. It, it sort of becomes le uh, less important as you as it goes back as it does when it goes this way. And this way includes the line that it makes. So here's the parts of the pen have to be considered. The nib is here. That's called the nib. Beautiful drawing, isn't it? Looks like a little smiley face. There we go. Nib, section, nib and feed. Section, barrel, cap, clip. And then here's the line that it makes. My present co-respondents that had been watching my videos and liking them and wanting to buy a pen from me. Sort of this is the most important part, followed by, of course, the nib that makes that line. And then this, as we move further back, this is less important. You know, the way the pen fits in your hand is important. The fact that it fills and has a functioning uh, ink supply is important. The cap is important. The clip is maybe the least important part of this for these people because uh, they have their pen at their desk and they use it at their desk. Now I may run into people like you, 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 who uh, write your journals while on the bus or the train or on your bicycle or you carry the pen with you to recount all of your uh, details of your day, which includes your commute from your desk. So a clip is important because it is in your, stays safely in your pocket. But it's mostly this. And recently, the last two or three people that I've talked to face-to-face -face on Skype or some platform, we, I'm getting people that are interested not just in the flexible. Yes, flexible nibs are seductive. But there are so many different kinds of nibs, and there's so many different reasons to use a pen for whatever you're writing. And yes, calligraphy and fancy lettering is uh, fun and seductive, but sometimes you don't want that. 
and I've had, I've talked to a couple of writers who, and they're writers, they're not calligraphers, they're not artists. They use a pen as a tool to get their thoughts onto the page. And one person uh, really likes very fine nibs. And what was interesting when I was talking to him, he agreed with me and with some other people that I talked to recently. We like talking about how the pen disappears in our hand as we're writing. It just becomes part of our process and part of our body. And um, it sort of disappears as we're lost in our thought. But one person said they liked the idea of it, of the pen when it hits a little bump on the page and it sort of jolts you back into consciousness of the fact that you're using a pen. This is a tool that that is uh, a partner in what you're doing. And um, that was a really interesting thing. He quoted uh, a German philosopher is Heidegger? I can't remember. We'll figure it out when I next talk to him. But um, he also said something that was really interesting, that he really hates modern pens because they're too smooth. And that's quite often the case. Because People, when they first try a fountain pen, they say, oh, that's scratchy. Ooh, that sound I don't like. It sounds like fingernails on a chalkboard. And it might, if you've never, ever, 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 ever used a pen or heard one or held one in your hand and used it, you might have that experience. Um, but when you learn that it's part of the experience, um, I think you miss it when it's gone. And um, that's sort of why I am so sad when I see people at pen shows lined up to have their nibs ground or smoothed or whatever the term is, because often they take that bite out of the nib and the bite and the noise it makes and the sharpness that it has as it's moving across the page I think is something that helps you form the letters. I like thinking about it as a keel on a sailboat. Um, it helps you stay on course. When you lift up the keel, the boat just slides. And yes, it's smoother. It's not crashing through the waves. It's sliding, pushing back, sliding you know, toward the least um, blah, 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 blah. What, what's the word I want? The least um, resistance, path of least resistance. Thank you, Pierre Gustafson. And that's what modern nibs feel like to me. They're so smooth that there isn't that sound, that bite, that... Um, that feedback that the pen gives you both in the tiny little vibrations it might have and the sound that comes from those vibrations. You feel the vibrations in your fingers and you hear the sound in your ear, ear balls, your eardrums, um, that I think that helps you drive the boat, drive the sailboat, uh, move the pen around. And, um, that interplay between the, the noise and the vibrations is sort of what is really, really fun. And um, it can get to the point where you know it so well that it becomes invisible to you. It's just, you know, the sound of your heartbeat. You know, you don't have to hear it to know that it's working. Um, you're, it's still making a noise, but you just don't notice it because you're so used to it. And that's sort of what a, a pen, a quote, scratchy pen, is like to me. 
it becomes part of the process. And I thought that, you know, when he was mentioning that, I was learning things about pens that I might have known in my heart, in my brain, but I never bothered to put them to words, which is really what's fun about connecting with a person via Skype or via uh, FaceTime or something where you start having a conversation and they're telling you about the passion they have about the pen. And much of it is the same passions I have. And it's nice sometimes to remember what it was like when you tried your first flexible nib and found God there. Because um, you forget what it was like, but when you hear someone else talk about whatever it is, whatever whatever the quality of the pen is, it does bring back memories that you had and sort of rekindles them. So that's what's really, really fun about connecting with you and you and you. You could talk all day long and I wouldn't learn a thing. No, that's not true. You'd tell me exactly what year this pen was made and how many they made and uh, how much it cost in 1936 or whenever this pen was around. But um, that's not really helping me appreciate this <laughs> pen, where someone uh, else talking about it might um, bring up this German philosopher and his um, his, real, his his philosophical take on tools. So the uh, so that's what's fun, and the particular person I just spoke with um, most recently. Uh, is someone that wants, I have to get this straight, this correctly, wants a very fine nib. And um, what I'm doing now, I've, I have all of these boxes and many more of pens that I at one time was sorting out by the kind of nib they had. This one says last legs and stub because I didn't have that many stub nibs. But I did have a lot of pens on their last legs where there they were, you know, there might have been a slight crease in the in the pen nib, or there could have even had a tiny little crack starting on the on the wing of the 747. I love watching those airplane crash movies. Call me crazy, but... Seconds from disaster. Um, I just find it fascinating that the trauma that happens is the result of some tiny misunderstanding or bolt or whatever. And metal fatigue is one of the causes. And uh, some of these pen nibs that I have are have a little bit of metal fatigue. And I think I've mentioned this a couple of times already, but there's a woman, woman in my building that whenever, years ago, she wanted a pen to do calligraphy. And I had a pen which she was trying out and she really liked. And I looked at it under the loop and there was this little tiny crack coming out from one of the tines. And that crack isn't going to get any better. So I said to her, I said, I'm going to give this pen to you for you to use as long as you want. And when the nib finally breaks, which it will do, I'll replace it with another nib that has a tiny crack in it. 
<laughs> I mean, she, rather than having her buy a pen, she was willing to buy a pen, but I, she was happy to have a pen for, for nothing. Um, so, uh, and that was years ago, and she's done lots and lots and lots of calligraphy with that pen, calligraphic writing, where, um, you know, she gets the shaded line. She she generally writes lots of place cards with it, and it's perfectly fine. So it's on its last legs, and it's been on its last legs for three years. So, heck, why not? So I do have some pens that are on their last legs, and I have other pens that are account nibs, and I have other pens that are... Other so what I'm doing right now... I'm actually trying to sort through these pens and I'm not going to go through the trouble of fixing this particular pen. I didn't realize that was in the way here because I don't need to right now, but it's perf it's holding this nib perfectly fine. So what I'm doing is I'm just for the Watermans, because I have a lot of these things. Um, I'm, like, this is a very bent nib, and, um, but it's a nib, and I can fix it later. But what I'm doing is I'm sorting out these pens and putting them, shoving them, gently placing them, setting them. I'm setting them into the, into a body that can hold them and where I can try them out, test them out, customer can test them out, and um, then when they say, I really like this pen that's this one, I'll say, okay, that fits in a commando-sized pen. Uh, let's see if I have a commando-sized pen that isn't broken to pieces, but at least I'll know what nib they want. So I'm trying to come up with words that that describe the sorts of nibs I have. And I've come up with accountant or fine rigid um, rigid with just a slight bit of flex, which I find in pens that are marked accountant. And this is a keyhole nib that's marked purple, I think. Purple. And this writes like the accountant nib. I don't know if they purple was the accountant color or not. This one is another number five size nib. And I think this one, does this even say accountant? Where's my loop? My tired eyes. Yes, this says accountant. It does say. Sometimes they say it above the word waterman, and other times they say say it further down. And this is one that says it further down. So it wasn't where it normally I normally see it. So both of these pens are in the accountant pile. Springy. These are pens that they may not be completely fine, but there's a nice springiness to it where there's a really fun play between the downstroke, you pressing down and it wanting to go back to normal. There's a nice uh, dialogue between me and the, and the nib. Um, in the line that it's making. It's really um, springy. And I don't call them a similar nib to this. I refer to as snappy. Springy and snappy. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Leak, leak, leak. It's Springy and snappy show. Snappy. These are snappy nibs. And these um, 
are the nibs that snap back to from thick to thin really, really quick. And I refer to those as snappy. And they're a little different than springy. <laughs> and that's the best I can the best I can say. They really want to go back to sleep. <laughs> they want to go back to normal. And you're waking them up, but they really, they just snap right back to normal. And um, the other one is a little, I don't want to say sluggish. That's not right. Then there's the sloppy. Now sloppy is like the guy that really is eating a lot and his half of what he's trying to consume is dribbling down his chin and sliding out of the sides of his pie hole. And um, this might be sloppy because I'm looking at it under kind of the light here. There's a, is that a little pressure um, crack. No? Yes, no, yes, no. I need my electron microscope from the NTSB. It seems like maybe there's a little tiny, uh, what did I just call them? Metal fatigue thing going on on that one. So that might be the cause of some of this sloppiness. But it, sloppy is a flexible nib that's a little lazy. Can I say that? Lazy, it, it feels lazy at getting back to normal. So that it's the opposite of snappy. It's just, and it's really wet. So that's under sloppy. So I'm going to try to come up with nibs. And I'll, some of the nib names I'm going to use are going to be the, the, the ones that were used by the pen trade, like Manifold. Those were very stiff, think Schaefer lifetime nibs. Very stiff and kind of a broad-ish nib. They don't have to be fine. Now, for example, this pen. You know, then I've got pens like this that are really, really smooth but flexible, but I feel I can sort of push them around. And this, these are the kinds that I want to sell to artists. So I need a bin for that. Because, yes, it's fine. You can write your letter to the editor or telegraph your place cards or do anything you want with it. But there's a certain smoothness to this that makes it easy to sort of go backwards and uphill and you don't it, I don't feel that a sketcher who's sketching is going to break this by accident whereas a th snappy nib or even a sloppy nib um, might um, easily snap or cause, rip the paper or something so this goes into the sketchy the sketchy bin. I need a sketchy label. S K E T C H Y. I also call this rubbery. Often. And this nib is one like that. This is a Waterman 100 year pen, or is it an emblem pen? Waterman 100 year pen. Shoved in a commando body, which isn't entirely uncommon because they were the same size. 100 year pens, and some of the 100 year pens were. So, if you were an artist and want a nice sketching pen, that's the nib for you. Um, So, 
that's what I'm trying to do today, is to finally put nibs into into holders, placeholders. These are placeholders. Um, and I will be able to find them quickly when someone says, I, re I want a flexible nib. Uh, this is surprising. This nib, I would not have thought would have been able to do that. I thought I would, I thought I'd have to press down a lot harder to have this happen. It's very funny. This is another sketching pen. It's, it's not really prickly fine when it's fine. It doesn't have a, a sharp edge. It almost, I hate to just say it, because I just talked about how smooth, there's a smoothness about this nib that um, is in one way not pleasant, because, it, but it's not giving me that sort of sound. Look at me slob, slob, slobbering all over the... But it's, this is a really good one for a sketcher. It, again, it's a nice rubbery nib, and it's, it's, it's not grabbing at the paper at all when I'm pushing it in the wrong direction. Um, so, again, this is a great pen for a sketcher. It's a little too brash and loud. Um, meaning wide, fat, at its, at its um, narrowest point for a calligrapher to want, necessarily. But this is, it's really a surprising pen. It almost feels like someone did grind this down, but it, I know they didn't. But it's just, there's a certain smoothness to it that's a little surprising. Maybe because it's just a, a, what I would have called a medium nib, what was called medium back in the olden days. It doesn't have the sharp point. So that goes in the artist bin. Artsy. Rubbery. Um, so this is, this is kind of fun. Um, here's a, one of the people that wanted the fine, non-flexible nib also wanted a, uh, ladies pen. This is, uh, this is a Waterman 52 and a half V short. Um, thin pen, but it doesn't have a ring top, and it, and it never had a clip, so this was sold exactly like this. And um, he specifically wanted a ring top, though. I'm just going to put it with his pens. Where did his pens go? I think they're here. I've got, I'm, I'm, I have four people that I'm finding pens for right now, and some of them overlap with what they want, and some of them are very distinct. And the person that likes the thin pens and does want a ring top pen is someone who, um, that's his, his pile 